I'm going to tell you today about the worst hiring decision that I ever made. I owned a restaurant in Boulder, Colorado. I hired a manager to help me run the place. He let in two underage football players. They were accused of committing a felony. This was one of the incidents in the 2002 Colorado football recruiting scandal, and it made national news. National news. Um, the next morning, uh, the reporters were surrounding my restaurant. The Boulder Police Department came in. I was in deep trouble, about to lose my liquor license. And the police department were telling me all the things that were going to come down my way. And I said to the officer, is there anything that I can do that will help my situation? And he said, you need to learn how to hire better. And I said, got it. I called every business manager, hiring manager, executive business owner that I could think of. And I said to them, I am under direct orders from the Boulder Police Department in order to hire better, and can you please and thank you help me? The answers all had the same theme. Beth, I've owned my business for 30 years. Um, I'm selling it now because I don't have the right people on the bus. Beth, I wish I could help you, but I don't know what I'm doing. If you ever figure it out, please let me know. And Beth, I don't know why I can't hire good people, but I can't. So unfortunately, I'm not able to help you. And this question came up repeatedly. Why can't I hire good people? I have a degree in social work. I have additional coursework in psychology. I am a people person. I've owned two businesses. Why is it that I can't hire the right people? So throughout the research for this book, Why Can't I Hire Good People? I realized that there's a couple of key myths that we have about the interviewing and hiring process. And I'd like to share those with you today. The first one is judgment. We confuse judgment with interviewing skills. We look around in our lives and we say, I have great business colleagues, I have good friendships, therefore I have good judgment. And you do, you have great judgment. What that does not translate into is being a good interviewer. And here's why. Let's say that Henry and I meet at a networking event. Henry asked me about my business, I asked him about his business, and we think, oh, we're, there's some synergy, we should go and have coffee together. So we do, we go and we have coffee together, we talk about ways to work together collaboratively, we leave the coffee shop caffeinated with a to-do list. Everybody is satisfied. That is a normal interaction between two people. But let's say that Henry is asking me for a job. Henry is nervous, anxious, worried, and afraid. He is experiencing a trauma. He is afraid of what, the li what life is going to bring back to him after he is unemployed, right? This is a big deal for Henry. So Henry is going to tell me everything that I want to hear so that he lands this job. It's not lying, it's survival. The minute that Henry gets this job and he has direct deposit, then he starts to think, I'm not sure if this is the right job for me. And therein lies the reason that we have a 90 day probationary period. Now on my end, I'm the hiring manager, right? I'm doing my job. I'm doing the job of the position that's empty. I've taken on a third part-time job of interviewing and hiring. I'm working 85 hours a week and I'm reading resumes at nine o'clock at night. So you can be guaranteed that when someone walks into an interview and tells me what I wanna hear, I'm going to hire them. Then I'm gonna hold on to them when they don't work out because I don't trust my interview process. So your judgment works in a normal situation. But in an interview, there is a big power difference. This power difference is the largest power difference that exists between two consenting adults. I, as the interviewer, control the entire interaction. 
I say when we're going to meet, where we're going to meet, what questions will be asked, how that person will be evaluated, and whether or not they ever find out if they get the job. Henry's only recourse is to leave the job interview, which doesn't behoove him because he needs a job. That is not a normal human interaction between two people. And as a matter of fact, the only time it ever occurs is in a job interview between the candidate and the potential employer. Okay? All right. The second myth. If I ask the right questions, I'm going to get the information that I need in order to make a successful hiring decision. Not true. Let me tell you a story about that. I interviewed a senior level electrical engineer. He'd done engineering his entire life. He was good at the work that he did. And yet his language when he described his work was very, very low energy. Ugh, oh, those pesky clients. Ugh, oh, those deadlines. Ugh, oh, engineering is so um, stressful of a position that I have. Nothing was inspiring or energetic. So I asked him a question that I've asked a thousand times in my career. Tell me about your dream job. And he said, I'd be a ballroom dance instructor on a cruise ship. <laughs> we did not hire him for that senior level electrical engineer because his passion was not in engineering. It's in ballroom dancing and I really do hope that I run into him on the Royal Caribbean one of these days watching him teach people how to ballroom dance because that's obviously what he wanted to do. But the key here is it's not about my question. I've asked that question a thousand times before. It's about his response. So when you are focused on what questions you're going to ask somebody, you are not listening to the candidate's responses. So the key here is to set your questions ahead of time and ask the same questions in the same order to every single candidate so that you don't have to think about that. All you have to do is focus on your candidate. Okay? And then the third myth. The third myth, <laughs> hire slow, fire fast. Okay, I've never met a company who did this. I have never had a hiring manager that said, oh Beth, please take lots of time hiring this person. That doesn't work. And then on the flip side of that, we don't fire people usually fast enough. They're in the job, they're not doing well, and we're gonna make do as a hiring manager. Let me tell you why making do loses you money, okay? The way the energy flow should happen in an office is that the employee has your back and you go out and take care of your business and your clients. Your business and your clients, they grow with you. That energy circles back around to take care of your employee. And then, again, you go back out and you take care of your clients, right? The minute that you turn around to deal with an ineffective employee, you have turned your, business, your back on your entire business. This is why you cannot allow someone on your staff that is not doing the job that you were asking them to do. So, what I want you to do is focus on your ideal candidate list. I want you, before you ever start a hiring process, to get out a piece of paper and a pen, and I want you to write down, if, if I could have my dream person for this position, who would they be and what would they know? And then you hold out until that person shows up for you, because they will show up for you. Um, I have a client who called me bawling her eyes out. She is a trusting, kind, caring, loyal individual. Her top three employees stole her intellectual property, her processes, and they went around the corner and started a competing business. They completely gutted her client list. She was so afraid that to hire a replacement for these people that she was going to make the same mistakes over and over and over. So we put her through my seven step process that's laid out in my book. We hired her business manager. He's been there for four years. 
She has expanded to multiple locations. She takes long, relaxing vacations. She travels the world and speaks and is extremely satisfied in her life. It's, it's a wonderful thing to see. So why can't we hire good people? We can. We do. We will. And when you have the right people on the bus with you, the people protecting your back, we can move mountains. Thank you.